Welcome back to Blender Daily. In this tutorial, I want to share 10 exciting Blender tips to improve your 3D workflow. I hope you find it useful. Let's get started. Whenever I have a specific color that I need for my project, I like to save it directly within Blender. To do so, I'm going to open up a new window and switch this to the image editor. Here we can simply click on this plus button to generate a new image. And before I click on OK, I would like to open up this color picker where I can select the exact color that I need. You can either do this with this color wheel up here or paste the hex code in this field if you have it. Then just click OK and it is going to generate an image entirely with our color. If this window gets into your way, you can simply collapse it and you won't see it. And once you need the color, simply open it up hover over the color field that you need and press E to get the eyedropper tool. And then simply click on our saved color. And if you prefer to work with color palettes, you can also just take them and drag and drop them into our image editor. Then again simply hover over the color field and press E to get the eyedropper tool and select the corresponding colors. If you are looking for great color palettes, I can recommend you colorhunt.co. This is a great website to find color inspiration and download beautiful color palettes for free. Did you know that in Blender we can use light objects not only to add light, but also to remove light from our scene. For this we simply need to bring the power value of our light object to a negative value. If I try to drag this value to something below zero, you can see that this doesn't work. I can bring it to a value lower than zero. So instead we need to click on it and then type in minus 50 for example, and now it is working. You can see that the inside now becomes really dark and we can make this even extremer, maybe with minus 500. And now this inside is completely black. Here is the difference between no light and the light with a negative value. Unfortunately, this only works with cycles. Okay, so in this simple demo scene, you can see that I have this little table and a pot with some flowers in it. Now let's say I want to parent this pot to this table object so that it follows along with any transformations that I might make. And we can quickly do this in the outliner by simply selecting the pot object and then drag it onto the table object while holding down shift. If I now let go, you can see that we get this relationship line down here and we can also see that the pot is parented to this table. If we open this up in the outliner and you can see that the pot is now in the hierarchy below the corner table. So when I now take the table and start to move it around, rotate it or scale it, the flowers always follow along. All right, so in this tip, I want to show you how we can create geometry in Blender that is similar to this type of fence that you are probably all familiar with. And for this, I'm going to start off with just a simple plane. And let's tap into edit mode. And first of all, we need to subdivide this face a few times. So with everything selected, right click and choose the subdivide option. We need to increase the number of cuts, so let's open the menu in the bottom left corner and increase this number to something around 10. With everything selected, go up to face and choose the poke faces option, which is going to add all those diagonal cuts to our faces. Now we don't need our original edges anymore, so to get rid of them, go up to face again and choose the tries to quads option or simply press Alt J, which is the corresponding shortcut. And now we have the geometry that we need, which is similar to this fence right here. However, we still have the original faces. So let's remove them with the shortcut X and then choose only faces. So now we are left with only the edges of this fence. And when we tab out of edit mode and were to render this right now, we wouldn't see anything because those edges are extremely thin and don't have any faces. So to fix this, go to the modifiers and add in a skin modifier. 
This is way too big by default. So let's scale this down by tapping into edit mode again. Press A to select everything. Then N to open up the side panel and bring this mean radius down to something around 0 0.005. And now we have this nice fence geometry. If you want, we can also get rid of this border around the fence that we currently have. For this, go back into edit mode and also switch to the wireframe shading mode so we can see the edges below our geometry. Then I also want to switch to edge selection and just select all the edges around here. I'm holding down control and left clicking to quickly select them. And with all of them selected, press X and delete the edges. And this is how we get a nice fence in Blender. And if you want, we can also enable smooth shading in the skin modifier to make this look even better. You probably already know that we can use the shortcut Alt D to create a linked duplicate of an object. And when I now edit any of these duplicates in edit mode, both of those instances will update at the same time. This is incredibly useful. However, you might not know that this is also extremely useful with light and text objects. So let me first demonstrate this with this text object. So I'm going to create two linked duplicates with the shortcut Alt D. And now let's say I decide that I want to change this text from fern to plant. So in order to adjust this, I simply need to select one of those three objects, tab into edit mode and adjust it to plant. And all of those three objects will update simultaneously. This can really save me a lot of time. Now let's also demonstrate this with the light object. So I'm going to switch to render preview for this. And then again, use the shortcut Alt D to create a linked instance. Uh, maybe let's make a third light as well, place it right here. And now we have three synchronized light objects. And then when I want to change the color, for example, I can simply select one of those lights, adjust it, and it will update all three lights at the same time. I could also do the same thing with the power. I think this Alt D shortcut to create linked duplicates is extremely powerful if you know how to use it. Before we continue with tip number six, I want to share a sponsored bonus tip with you. But don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Instead, I want to let you know that the Botanic and Traffic add-ons now have free versions available. Botanic is a huge tree and nature asset library with beautiful models for Blender. Traffic is also a model library with high quality car assets. You can get a completely free trial version without any time limit on Gumroad or test it for $1 on the Blender market. You can find the corresponding links in the video description. I highly recommend you to check them out as both of those add-ons can really improve your 3D work. But now let's move on with tip number 6. Did you know that we can quickly duplicate objects simply by selecting them in the outliner and then drag and drop them into the 3D viewport. In Blender 3.0 and newer, we even get those nice grid lines to quickly align the objects with the normals in our scene. In this tip, I want to show you how we can quickly adjust the resolution of our render, but still keep the current aspect ratio. For this, go to the output properties where you find the resolution options. When I now change the resolution of one axis, you can see that the aspect ratio of the camera changes. So let's go back and instead I'm going to click with the left mouse button and drag over the X and Y value at the same time. Now I drag to the left or to the right side in order to increase or decrease the resolution. You can see that now I can change the resolution without changing the aspect ratio. Alternatively, you could also use this percentage slider to bring the resolution down without changing the aspect ratio, but you can see that we can't bring this to a value higher than 100%. So instead, if you want to increase the resolution, you need to click on this percentage value and type in something like 200% in order to double the resolution. 
Let's say you are in edit mode and you just made a selection that you want to save since you might need it again later on. This is actually very easy to do. For this simply go to the object data properties and on the vertex group create a new one. If you double click on it you can rename it for example to selection and with our vertices still selected click on assign. Now let's say we come back later on and we already lost the selection we can quickly get it back simply by selecting our vertex group and then choose the select option. If we want to do the same thing with a face selection, so let me quickly select a few face loops to demonstrate this. We can do the same thing, however this time we're gonna use the face maps. Click on the plus to create a new face map and let's call this face selection. Then click on assign and when we now come back later on and want to get the selection back, again we simply select our face map and choose the select option. Okay, so for this tip I prepared a very simple scene of a room, however it is very hard to work with it since the walls always get into our way. However, there is a very simple solution to fix this. For this select the wall object, then go to the material properties and it is important that you already apply the material to it. Then go to the material settings and enable backface calling. We can't see any difference yet, however if we tab into edit mode, select all the faces, then go up to mesh and under normals, flip the normals, you can see that now all the walls that are facing us become transparent and we can always see inside of the room. This is extremely useful when you are working with interiors. In this example I have six different eggs that all have the same color, however they do not share the same material since each of them has an individual texture. Now let's say I want to change the color of them, I would have to go through all the six egg materials and adjust the colors individually. This makes it really hard to try out and compare different colors. That's why in this tutorial I want to show you how we can link colors across multiple materials. For this I'm gonna press Shift A in the node editor and under input bring in an RGB node. Connect this to wherever you need the color and then input the color that you want to change this to. Next we need to turn this RGB node into a node group. So let's select it and press Ctrl G to convert it into a node group. You can use the tab key to exit the group and I'm just going to rename this to color. Then I can go through all the six egg materials, press shift A and on the group bring in the color node and connect this to the color input. And now that all of these six eggs have the same color group, we can simply select this group, tap to see inside of it and we can now adjust this color in here and it will update all the six eggs at the same time. I think this is a very useful trick that can be used in a lot of situations. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this Blender tip compilation. Let me know in the comments which one of these you find to be the most useful. And if you want even more tips and tricks you can check out my other tip compilations on this channel or follow me on Instagram, where I share Blender content on a daily basis. Also, don't forget to check out the free versions of Botanic and Traffic. The links are in the video description. I am Nick from Blender Daily, see you in the next one.